Hey guys, today I'll be making potassium chlorate from bleach, uh, which is a really simple process, but not very efficient. Um, so what I'm going to do is start with 500 milliliters of uh, just regular old household bleach, uh, and we're going to boil that. So I need to boil it down to get rid of most of the water, and uh, we want to boil it until crystals start appearing. So this bleach is uh, supposedly more concentrated than regular bleach. The, it claims to be 8.25 percent sodium hypochlorite on the label, and I think normal bleach is like 6 percent. Um, so we should get hopefully a little bit better yield out of this. So I added a stir bar to help promote boiling, and uh, while it's doing that I wanted to talk about what's actually going on here. So bleach is sodium hypochlorite. And what we're doing by heating it is disproportionating it into sodium chloride and sodium chlorate. Now these two salts will stay into solution until we boil off the majority of the water and then they'll start to crystallize out and that's the point at which we want to stop boiling. Uh, this reaction only happens with heating, with boiling. Uh, so you can't just evaporate bleach and end up with chlorate. It doesn't work that way. Um, now this process is not terribly efficient and we're probably not going to end up with a great yield at the end but it is very easy uh, and it's a lot faster than the other method. The other method to use is electrolysis and um, I'll definitely, I'd love to do a video about that in the future and I'm sure I will. All right, we've reached the point where I can start to see crystals so I'm going to remove it from the heat and let it cool down. You can see as it cools it forms a crust of crystals on the top of it and you can see there's quite a bit precipitated down in there as well. Now that my uh, boiled bleach solution is cooled down, uh, I need to filter off all this uh, sodium chloride precipitate. So we'll do that now. It still definitely smells like bleach, so I mean that tells me that the disproportionation was not complete, so that's another indication of how inefficient this process is. So the solution filtered to about 200 milliliters, um, and that is a solution of, like I said, sodium chloride and sodium chlorate. So now we need to change that to potassium chlorate so that we can recover it, and uh, we're going to add potassium chloride to do that. And uh, my source is no salt, uh, which is sodium-free salt. It's supposedly got no sodium in it and is almost entirely potassium chloride. So I'm going to dissolve about 75 grams of that into another solution of 200 milliliters of distilled water so we get a saturated solution of potassium chloride and I'm speeding that up by uh, some stirring and a little bit of heat. Alright I think I've dissolved about as much as I can from the uh, chloride so you can see over here it's still a really cloudy solution that's happened to me before just because there's all the other additives and stuff that's in there um, so because it's not clear we need to filter that again so I'm gonna filter it into the uh, chlorate solution. So we should see uh, precipitate if all goes well. So let's start filtering. Now strangely I didn't get any precipitate from just mixing them together at room temperature. Maybe that's because the chloride solution was hot and so it's a little too hot. I think what I'm going to do is take this and put it in the fridge for a little while and see if we get anything to come out. So I left the beaker uh, in the fridge overnight and you can see we've got a nice layer of uh, chlorate crystals that have precipitated out on the bottom. So now I'm just going to decant off the liquid into another beaker. And there you go, you can see we have some nice crystals. I think what I'm going to do is try boiling this down a little bit more and see if I can squeeze some more out of the liquid uh, but we'll see how that all turns out. So after the precipitation here's what I recovered 9 grams of really beautiful uh, plate-like crystals so this should be fairly pure uh, potassium chlorate. Now to test it out I've mixed one gram of the product with a half a gram of sugar and I'm gonna add a very small amount of concentrated sulfuric acid. <laughs> now 9 grams is not that much. We started out with 8.25 percent sodium hypochlorite uh, bleach solution which means there should be about 40 grams of the hypochlorite in 500 milliliters which is what we started with. Uh, after going through all the stoichiometry 
um, I should theoretically end up with 22 grams of potassium chlorate at the end of this. So 9 grams is, is far short of that. And you know that's because this, this process is not terribly efficient. But what I tried to do is uh, recover a second crop by boiling the solution down more um, to I think about 200 milliliters and then doing another uh, fridge recrystallization. Uh, and I ended up with this. You can see there's quite a difference. So this on the right uh, is a lot more compact and there's a lot of needle shapes in there instead of these nice plates. So that means there's definitely some kind of contamination. So this stuff on the right is 23 and a half grams. So that alone is more than the theoretical maximum yield, which I'm sure I didn't get anywhere near. So that means that there's definitely a lot of impurities. So in testing this second batch of crystals in the same way that I did the first, I actually also found out that there's a lot of impurities, uh, far too much for this to be of any use really. So again, I did the exact same procedure uh, and added the acid and you can see the results. So there's too much in here to be of any use. So to make it useful, I would have to do a recrystallization or probably multiple recrystallizations to get a good level of purity. I may just start over and try again. We'll see. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed and thanks a lot for watching.